Greetings to all you lovely marketing people out there. This is Mike Doyle, and welcome to the Drive80.com Unnamed Podcast, where the point of the show is to answer the question, how do you market your video or videos? In this episode, I talked to Justin and Ben from Storyboard Media down here in uh, Durham, North Carolina. Well, down in North Carolina. I'm in Raleigh. They're in Durham. Whatever. They specialize in corporate videos that don't suck. Whether it's a single video production or a year's worth of video content, they only want to work on projects that deliver an ROI for their clients. I met these guys through the Wistia Partnership Program. We had some coffee, and I asked them to be on the show because they both had some really great insights on how to create campaigns for their clients based on video. Some of the topics we touch on in this episode are why 200 views are sometimes better than 10,000 views uh, for equaling success. How they spent two months doing research with one client so they could create 12 months worth of content that are specific to grabbing the attention of that audience. Why a video on YouTube should be set up different than a video on Instagram, i.e. the font size, the length, and so on, and a ton more. Before we begin, please subscribe to the podcast, and if you're listening on YouTube, please comment below with any questions, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and share this with any share this with anybody who is in marketing who could get some really valuable tips on how to uh, market with video. As I've been doing in the previous episodes, this episode is brought to you by SendLift.com. Even though Nick Berry is not paying me to say that, I just feel like saying it. Uh, SendLift takes out the hassle of writing handwritten cards for your clients or leads and does it for you. So you just log in, you upload a spreadsheet, and voila, handwritten cards will be sent to prospects or clients or whomever. So check it out. Uh, actually, check it out and go to SendLift.com slash Drive80. Here we go. Let's dive in and enjoy the show. Justin and Ben, I'll let you guys uh, take it from here. Sure. Sure. So um, I guess to start, Storyboard Media, we started as a video production company uh, a little over three years ago um, and have slowly kind of morphed into more of a video marketing agency. Um, a lot of that was born out of selfish reasons. We, we were producing good content for our clients. Our clients were happy with it. We were happy with it, but they didn't really know what to do with it. Um, once they had it. And so we'd check in on it six months later, it'd have like 217 views on YouTube and th- that just gets kind of frustrating. So we saw an immediate need for, uh, you know, to help our clients figure out why they're making certain videos and then what to do with them once they've made them. So, uh, we've really spent a lot of the last year focusing on, on building strategy, uh, around everything that, that we produce. Uh, we're even starting to get away from, one-off videos and try to get people to more thoughtful campaigns or, or longer engagements just because doing one video oftentimes uh, isn't really worth it. Uh, we want our clients to see us as, as an investment instead of an expense. Uh, and if you go into the process from the beginning, knowing what goals you're trying to accomplish, then once you put something out there, you can see whether you're achieving those goals. Um, yeah. What thoughts? Hey, I'm Justin. Um, <laughs> ben pretty much hit on the head. It's thing we've been talking about for the past several months and kind of been turning our ship a little bit to try and market ourselves as that, um, but also really get a good grasp of what that all means and, and how we can be most effective for our clients. Exactly. Now, like, what was the tipping point where – you know, you said you had some clients or you talked to them six months later and they had like 217 views. Sometimes that could be a success. You know, if you, if your audience, right. you know, sometimes I think a lot of people don't realize that that is a good thing. They think they need to have 10,000 views. And they're like, oh, we're successful. I mean, I have a, I have a client, he had 10,000 views on a, a video we did for his deli. And I'm like, oh man, what did that do? He's like, well, you know, it, you know, got 10,000 views. So he didn't really know what to do with it. You know, he, he was like, well, I didn't know how to track it. And I think that's where people are asking that question. Well, how do we track the success of this? Or, you know, maybe 10, 217 views is successful because if you follow that down a path and if it's in 217 views, you know, maybe five of them or 10 of them actually take action, that's success. So, like, what did you guys... 
when you when you know when you saw that they're like, all right, they're only getting these views. What 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 was the tipping point where you said, okay, well, we need to start doing this to get them the success that they're asking for? Well, I, I think before I answer that question, um, I, I think you're dead right that 217 views could be a success. Um, we we would always, even from the beginning, talk to clients who who <laughs> you've always got the client who comes to you and says, I. You know, my goal for this video is for it to go viral. Oh man, I hate that. <laughs> you like, like, part of your brain just turns off at that <clears> point. But, um, but even if it's not going viral, even if it's ten thousand views versus two hundred views, uh, if you've got a targeted campaign where you want a specific video to reach two hundred specific prospects, if it only ends up with two hundred seventeen views, then that's a really big success yeah. because you directed the right 200 people to that video. And 200 views is so much more valuable than 10,000 if 10,000 views are no one who could even buy your product or your service. Right. So you're absolutely right. 200 views could be a success. For us, that was a specific scenario where we had done a top of funnel brand flagship video that is supposed to be have wide reach and introduce people to the brand. So the goal for that was some some brand lift, uh, certainly brand awareness, and when you're getting those limited views, you you're not a success. Um, now back to your original question, which you'll have to repeat for me. What was like the so what when you saw that like what went on in your mind? You said, okay, we did one video, they got this many views. We need to change this up a bit. Then did did you go back? To, was that a specific in, instance where you went back to that client and said, all right, we need to make this an actual campaign or we see that the future with you guys is doing more videos but structuring them and putting them in place like this? Is that um, a question? I, I mean, as I don't know if that's like a specific, if it makes yeah, sense. I think that to some degree we just stumbled upon some new technology like Vidyard or Wistia that – that starts drawing different analytics. So, I mean, we mentioned views because that's the most accessible metric for most people, but there, <clears throat> there are other metrics that might be more important, like engagement and how long they're watching it, or if they're rewatching it, what parts that um, some really cool things Wistia learned when they saw what people re were rewatching in that video. Um, so I think when we started to see that there was a lot more uh, information available. Um, that's when I think the tipping point happened. Cause then we started digging into that technology and seeing how, how powerful it can be when, when paired with a campaign and being very targeted in your approach. Um, account based marketing is kind of a hot phrase. Yeah. Uh, and I think video plays so nicely into that. Uh, it's, it's some of our, our favorite work to do because we get to talk to just one person. We don't have to try and water our message down for the masses. Yeah. So, okay. So the, I keep saying, so I need to stop doing that. The one thing that the, the, the couple podcast episodes that have been out, like I mentioned before we started filming or uh, we started recording this, people have said would, it really is helpful. If we can dive into like a specific instance um, or case study, however they want to call it, and really mm -hmm. break that apart and learn from that so they can take tidbits from that and apply it to what their strategy is. Now, you said that there was an example. We can't name you know the client, but can you kind of speak to where we started off talking about you did one video for, you know, you were doing one-offs for clients, seeing they were getting small views. You started seeing things like Wistia and other video players out there where you're like, oh, wow, there's these other aspects of video that we can show them that there is a success and now you got to a point where you said we've got this so then we landed this one client we did a campaign from that with all these things that we learned and we implemented these things and this happened yeah so um i think one example of that is uh, a client we're working with now who last summer we uh we actually did one of our very first uh, full-on strategy engagements with them. So we spent two months with their marketing team uh, talking about uh, their business goals for the upcoming year, their marketing goals for the upcoming year. Uh, this particular company was making a pivot from 
more of a react, like a reactionary service-based business to more of a proactive retail business, uh, which helped the timing. We helped walk them through what their brand why was, why it was that they do what they do every day. Because, you know, Simon Sinek says people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. Yep. Uh, we walked them through developing their audience personas. And one of the things was that their customer base is older and literally dying out. So they need to attract a younger customer base. So we were able to focus on a younger video viewing customer base, define who that one, two, three people that we were ever talking to were. Um, and over the course of, of I think four meetings, uh, like full day, full team meetings, we got enough of a sense of where this company was going, where it was coming from, that we were able to put together a comprehensive 12 month video marketing content pitch. Wow. Um, what we were able to do was, was root all of those concepts back to one of their business or marketing goals that we had established. At least one. A at least one. Uh, sometimes all three that we decided to focus on. Um, we could basically anchor it against which audience we were uh, speaking to in that, in that particular video. So which singular persona. Um, and what we found was that, that it not only helped focus us in terms of our ideation, but we've actually been able to produce better quality content for them because we know that client so much better now than if we had just done our standard like one one hour meeting of discovery up front for a one off project. Yeah. I find that when you put these videos out in these places that you learned you know, like if you were on Facebook or um if you're on YouTube, you kinda utilize that the way that that is set up to speak a certain way in the video to give people a call to action? Yeah, part of our, our giant strategy session with them was all right, how are we gonna distribute these videos? What's that process? Where are they where are they gonna be seen and who's gonna be watching them there? Um sorry, Hamed's taking pictures of us. <laughs> Just got distracted. Can you can we say happy birthday to Hamed by the way? Yeah, he's our let's, awesome let's, project manager. Come Hamed, on, Hamed, get in here. Get All in right. here, man. Get there. Happy right. birthday. Happy, happy birthday. birthday. Appreciate it. Yep. Um, <laughs> All right, go back to work. <laughs> uh, but yeah, knowing where the con knowing the context of that video is really important. Are people going to be watching this video on their phone because it came up on Instagram? Right. Or going to be viewing this while they're killing time at the airport? Like. Where and how and why are they watching these videos is all really important. Well, did and you another find thing, that, but did you find that out in the meetings? Did you think so? You you had two months to figure this stuff out because you're thinking about making an avatar of a client, but then you're asking the question, okay, where are they going to watch this, and how do we speak to them through a video, and they know we know where they are at that moment. Yeah, I, I think we're we're pretty much figuring that out up front as much as possible, right? Yeah. It's, it's as we develop this persona, um, what do we know about them? So if, if, as we develop the persona, it's, it's about buying habits. It's about, you know, it's about age demographics, but then it's always about and, right? It's almost like an improv exercise. Yes, and. So she's in her mid-30s, yes, and she's not married, yes, and she has a good job, yes, and she likes to... Uh, kind of create her own unique style. Yeah, so you keep kind of building these uh, these points in to kind of build this ideal customer, and then you take the information that you know about regular viewing habits and can kind of assign it to based on on everything else that you figured out. So if she's younger, then she's probably doing a lot of mobile viewing. Um, she's probably doing a lot of you know a lot of Instagram, a lot of Facebook, maybe less YouTube. Uh, maybe less on the website. Um, a another reason to seriously <clears throat> consider this is as silly as how often do you see a brand put their video on their website? You're watching it on their website. Their website is the only place this video lives, and the call to action at the end is to learn more, visit our website. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right? I mean, that it's is so completely <laughs> preventable. And essentially unforgivable at this point because it just shows 
we paid for this. We made this. We had no idea what we were going to do with it. So we told you to go to the place where you already are. Right. I mean, it, it's from like that small part of it, that kind of nitpicky part of it too. Okay. Well, if it's on Instagram, then we need to change the size of the font we use for our titles. Cause if it's on Instagram, it's going to be on a phone. If it's on a phone. We can only put so much information in it so they can see it. I mean, there's, I mean, it's almost a domino effect once you're yeah. really thinking about where people are going to be consuming this. Um, when you okay, so when you where were the places you put the videos? So these videos have gone on a mix of Instagram, uh, going on YouTube website. It really depends. So part of we just shot last week for this client. We just shot the first in a series of frequently asked questions videos. Oh, so nice. those are only going to live on the frequently asked questions portion of that client's website. But the goal is to attract that younger audience who is more likely to watch a video about something than read about something. So it's really just a play to kind of modernize their existing website content and, uh, and basically it's reaching answer out to a that, question. That audience too. It's like saying, we know you like video. We got video. It's just like it's a very subliminal thing too. Like, oh, they they understand how I want to consume my media, how I want this question to be answered. Just thinking about them. Did you find that making the videos for FAQ there was a need before you made them? Like, did you see that a lot of people landing on this page? Um, well, we're and they're and they're still emailing us, so we really need to address this with a yeah. video. So let's make them. So, so it's not so much that it's more, okay. So everybody knows, well, I assume everybody knows, uh, that free shipping is such a huge thing in e-commerce right now, right? I mean, you pretty much have to have some free shipping option. Well, this client has a very verbose website and they do in fact have free shipping on all orders over $49 or $99 or something. In the entire U.S., and that includes uh, uh, Alaska, and Hawaii, Guam. <laughs> Guam, Puerto Rico. Like it is hugely inclusive. But to find that answer, you have to go to Download like a PDF or the, the FAQ, click on the answer, uh, see the answer that doesn't really answer. It basically, what are your shipping rates? And then it's a very convoluted answer, and it says, "Click here to view a chart of our shipping rates." So you click again, you give you a chart of your shipping rates, and when we're looking at it, we see, oh my God, they have free shipping on all orders under $99 to the entire U.S. So we were able to flip it around and make the question, do you have free shipping? And then the answer is, of course we do. We ship free to the entire U.S. on all orders over $99, $49, whatever it is. And so part of it is we saw a weakness in how they were putting information out there and saw a way to not only distribute it to better, use it better media, more engaging media for it, but also really kind of rewrite the questions and take the free shipping as an answer you have to find after two or three steps to a very front, literally thumbnail level question, do you have free shipping? Yeah. I, I mean, want to click play to know the answer to this, and I'm going to get the answer to this. Yeah, and then like, I mean, you're basically, that's picking up extra dollars that they don't realize that they're losing. Yeah. And so in something like that, did you suggest, all right, there's a, you know, let's use Wistia, for example, because uh, we, we talked about that when we were together, mm -hmm. just how powerful it is. So you're saying, all right, so this button is going to exist on this landing page, which is on your website. Someone could click this. Now, did you suggest, sorry, did you suggest there would be like a light box pop up? Um, does that, inter you know, did you find something that wasn't intrusive in the actual site design? You know, like, how did you implement that? Well, unfortunately for the FAQ videos, we just shot them last week, so they. Right, I forgot about that part. So I'll, right. I'll scrap that question. <laughs> um, okay, so let me let me, re, let me reverse that. So you guys are going to be put, putting this out there for them. What are you suggesting that they do, and how they use that on the site? Are you going to suggest like a pop up, like a light box pop up with a video? Um, do you want the site to move when you have to get the developers involved? Like, how are you going to approach this? I think it should just be all about the viewer again, like they need to know their answer and move on. I don't think pop-ups are a good idea in that scenario. Okay. Um, 
pop-ups are great if you're if it's more of that brand level thing maybe and you're trying to really get them into the spirit and the feel and the mood and the why of your brand and take over the screen but if they're just trying to get an answer just let them click play let them enlarge if they want um, that would be my instinct but we haven't really offered that level of detail yet um, I think I think it largely depends on where the content sits in the buyer journey in the sales funnel uh, FAQ videos are very very bottom of funnel right they, they may have even already purchased but if they haven't already purchased they are like they've got stuff in their cart they're ready to purchase they just want to verify this this one answer before they kind of finish that purchase um, I think putting things in people's way at the bottom of the funnel is not a very smart move you've got to make everything just as easy as possible for them but if this were a largely lead gen based business or if this was uh, the type of content that you know some of the other stuff that we've produced for them is more thought leadership content mm -hmm. and so there's totally an opportunity there for them to watch some of the thought leadership stuff on maybe how to create um, a specific look right kind of an aspirational thing like oh I can do that like that was easy I want to go do that well part of part of the balance of that is then making it easy for them to go buy the things that you're selling that make it easy for them to do that so you could totally do a um, uh, a, a changing uh, call to action that directs them to uh, a specific page a specific product uh, anything like that you could do if it were again top of funnel get them to sign up for the email newsletter to to get more information especially with Wistia the amount of information you can get from Wistia when you've been able to capture someone's email address yeah uh, what you were saying the other day once you track their email address once I think you can backtrack to to uh, like past. previous videos right yeah you're saying that like if they watched any previous videos, it could, it could attach that email to. I think videos. we should glaze over that because I'm not 100 percent positive. <laughs> we might want to verify. It might that. be Vidyard, but I, I remember that being. I was astounded when I heard that. It might be Vidyard. Um, okay. And if but. it's not true, it's a wonderful feature request. <laughs> yeah, if Wistie is watching this. You should add this if you already haven't yes. <laughs> or are listening to this. Um, and so, what pieces do you have out there in play right now? Um. In general, or for this for this, for this particular part? client, um, is there anything actually in teasers. play with this client? We're giving them teasers for like yeah. So they so we one of the other things that we produced for this client that we actually just delivered the final uh, cut on last week um, was basically their new brand, what we call flagship video. Okay. So basically, their super top of funnel. This is. To why why. We do what we do. Um, and, and that was a really fun project to produce. Um, uh, it was several day shoot. I think we had like a total of 22 actors. I mean, it was just a lot of fun. It turned out really well. Um, one of the, so they're using it for a lot of, a lot of different reasons. They're using it interestingly internally as part of their pivot from the way that they've been doing business for 35 years okay. to this more retail focus. Um, they're also using it very much externally. And so um, almost coincidentally, their 35th anniversary is coming up later this month. And so they'll be doing a public release of this new brand flagship video uh, on the 35th uh, birthday for the company. Awesome. Um, but one of the things that they asked us for last week, which uh, made a whole lot of sense, is some 10 to 15 second cut downs, little teasers from this video. Uh, we've got, I don't know, seven or eight little scenes, kind of vignettes in this thing. Okay. Um, and we've put together little vignettes that basically tease that this new video is coming out, that they've started putting on mm. Instagram, uh, Facebook, things like that. When, so, they, when they're doing that and you're doing those clips, how do you suggest that a video ends? Like, coming soon? Uh, click here to say like what do you suggest so so for this one the 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 recommendation was end with the standard ending logo no call to action but with the new tagline oh. and so what what's happened in this video is is a refrain that re that we wrote in the script for this video 
the company has liked so much they've decided to trademark it and use it as their new tagline. Wow. So we're able to take uh, the little teaser clips from this video and then tease this new tagline that no one's seen before. No new information, no call to action, just here's something new. Yep. Um, not so much like building tension, but building a little bit of a little bit of mystery. Mm -hmm. Are you now in the so they're distributing all the teasers internally first and then ex then putting them out to the public, like you said, right? Uh, the teasers, I believe, are both internal and external at the same time. And that uh, I think so. Okay. And then they're releasing the video first internally. How are so they? How are out. they? How are they releasing it internally? Just mass email blasts to them, so like, "Hey, watch this! You're fired." Stage, in stages. There have been a few. Uh, there, of course, the marketing team has been involved with uh, production and and editing and things like that. Um, they just this week rolled it out to the executive team. Um, and then they're rolling it out to manager levels next, which I think is, uh, Monday okay. or Tuesday of next week. And then they'll be doing an all employee release. Uh, originally it was going to be an event. I don't know if it's still going to be an event or, and they got 400 employees. So any kind of internal, um, uh, events would be an event. But as far as I know, it's still an event where they're actually bringing all the, uh, employees together. They're announcing new mission statement, vision statement. I mean, so it's part of kind of an internal campaign, mm -hmm. uh, but it's also, you know, really the flagship for that internal campaign just as much as it is the external. It's basically a way for them to put a flag in the ground and say, this is who we are now. Yeah, I think a lot of people, they, they forget that there's that internal marketing that you have to do as well. You know, there's yeah. uh, we just did a video. We did two really short videos for um, Lenovo recently, and it was the, their pain point was that their sales team wasn't telling a client when they when they called in, just click this button, there's your serial number, and we can make the call a lot faster. Mm -hmm. And so we had to like just do something really quick to educate them on, hey guys, do you want to make more sales? When someone calls in and yells at you, just tell them to do this. And they just started email blasting the entire team internally because – Money isn't just coming from, you know, money's coming externally. Obviously, you got to bring it in. But internally, there's those little cracks you can fix, kind of like uh, little cracks in the dam that you can fix where, like, oh, we're losing money here. We just educate people on this. You know, that's going to help us as a company grow in revenue. And people well, forget about and that. Some of, us, some of us have worked for these types of companies and others haven't. But the bigger the company, the harder communication is across the board, right? I yes. mean, you've got not just teams, but you've got even teams within the same division that don't even know what each other are doing. So uh, communication internally is so important because, I mean, it's almost like another layer of branding guidelines, right? You've got to talk to your customers the same way that all of your marketing content is talking about your brand too. Yeah. Um, so there's a huge market for internal communications. And, and I think just the fact that video is so much more engaging than everything else, not just me saying it, all kinds of studies that I don't know the value of have said video is the most engaging way to, you know, get a certain piece of content out there. So yeah, why not internally and externally? hundred percent. Yeah. I think, um, I think, th I don't really want to speak to statistics cause I don't really know it. So I'll probably cut this out, but I think someone was saying about, you know, there's like 80% of, I don't even know. I, it was like 80% of, of statistics are completely made up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Oh, bullshit. I'm going to cut that out. <laughs> um, I think that in. <laughs> well, we are at the 30 minute mark. And I, like I said to every guest, we can like talk for so long because there's yeah. so many things we could uh, really dive into. But yeah, man, I think uh, a lot of good stuff um, you guys talked about here. Uh, before we cut out, is there anything you want to promote? Um, you know, anything that's. Uh, happening right now and you want to just be like yeah check this out or this is what's going on no i think um just if there are people listening to this that <clears throat> are doing it for an education or from an education standpoint if they have other questions or want to ask us anything uh we're pretty easy to find our uh, website is storyboardmedia.co we we really like helping other filmmakers if we have if we can um, so if they're trying to grow their business or grow grow their art and skills, if we can help, we'd be happy to. So 
um, if they want to know more about what we're doing, just, just reach out. Yeah, and I, and I would say to anybody who is thinking about uh, doing some video, more video, whatever your experience level is doing video for your company, your brand, you don't need to have a whole lot figured out before you reach out to a company like us. We actually prefer a blanker canvas. Um, if you've got an idea of what you need to happen, we'll work with you to figure out the best way to make that happen. You don't need to come with an idea or a plan or a script or a storyboard or anything like that. Um, we, we just as soon help you figure out how to get there. All right, that is the show, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you said, yes, Mike, I certainly did, then please message any of your marketing friends and tell them what cool tips you learned that could possibly benefit their lives and make them want to listen to this podcast. Also, check out drive80.com if you are struggling to explain what your company does. We accomplish this in a minute or so with animation. If you have any questions, uh, please send me an email at mike at drive80.com. I'd love to hear some feedback. Tell me what you like. Tell me the things I could fix uh, to really just make these episodes better, really give you guys a lot of value because, again, that is the point. I really want to be very focused on this. Um, so you're listening to it. Every time you hear it, there's something new, and it really you could take an action with it right there and grow your business or grow your clients' businesses, which will then help you grow your business because they'll want to pay you more. Again, Mike Doyle, drive80.com. Go in peace.